Welcome to day 10 of our Advent reading out of Luke. We have really been enjoying doing this together. Uh, it becomes a little more challenging for us to do this when the kids are in school and all four of us have different schedules to keep. So you might notice a difference between uh, light behind me or dark behind me or uh, there's no consistency. how schedule. we're dressed yes our house uh, runs on a pretty fluid schedule and it's usually based on um, what the needs are of the day so we've mastered flexibility <laughs> so we're going to read chapter 10 today out of the book of Luke there's three sections. Yeah. There's three sections. So, how about if I start and Josh, you want to take Good Samaritan? Is that uh, brother? That leaves gay with Mary Martha. That's fine. And, and Elizabeth is at the end of your yours. Section. Okay? No, I was saying, but okay. Would you like to pray? I'd, I'd pray about being tired, so no. <laughs> I'll pray about it. Lord Jesus, help us to uh, make it through this adventure even though we're tired. And Lord, speak to us that we would not just read books and read words out of a book, but that we would hear you speak to our lives and to our hearts. Amen. Amen. Chapter 10 of Luke. Mm -hmm. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. I tell you, It'll be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it'll be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, Will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. He who listens to you, listens to me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed 
to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going to, from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Okay, Elizabeth. The... Expert in the law, law replied the one who had mercy, mercy in on him. on him. Jesus told him go and do likewise. Nice. Right. <coughs> you can put me next on the follow up. Hold on. Where are you? Right down here. Okay. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. <clears throat> you know, there was a time um, this last, well, actually it was in March when uh, COVID first began and we were at home doing our family devotions and we were going around and highlighting certain scriptures through the Bible and for almost every scripture that we picked, there was a song that I knew that we could sing. But there's a lot of singing during those devotions. <laughs> there was a lot. You. Singing is one of the best ways to remember a scripture or a story. Singing was half the devotions. Can you tell us about it? Uh, so I, I, as we were reading through <laughs> that and I'm listening to what, you know, God might share with us today, I was reminded of a chorus that I learned, and I'm sure I was probably no bigger than Elizabeth, 
based on the Good Samaritan. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And it says, he poured in the oil and the wine. The kind that restoreth my soul. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho road. And he poured in the oil and the wine. There's a song for every verse in the Bible, isn't there? There probably isn't a song for every single verse. Because but... you haven't written all the rest of them yet. <laughs> but funny. you know what? I remembered that song and I remember the scriptures that it came from. And it talks about, the song is about Jesus, who finds us in all of the places that we are hurting. And oil and wine, um, if, if you look at today's medicines, many of today's medicines are still based on oil or ointment. Every night I'm putting ointment in my eye to make sure that this eye doesn't get all dried out overnight. It's based on petroleum oil that I put in my eye. And wine uh, would be a form of alcohol. And if you have a wound on your body, there are times when you've got to clean it out with something that will kill the germs. What do we have that kills germs? Things that are based on alcohol. Alcohol wipes are one of the first things that somebody might use to clean off skin if they're going to do a blood sample when or a they blood, did a blood draw. Test the other day for me, that's what they did. Yep, they do alcohol wipes. And so, and, and back then, I'm sure they didn't have, Josh, you, you are the man of science, you like science. Back then, there was no <laughs> science for the most part. But they there had was, learned. It hadn't been revealed yet. <laughs> yeah. They had learned back then, though, that things like oil and wine could be used to help heal the body. So what does that mean, though, when we talk about oil and wine, when we're talking about the way that Jesus heals our hearts? Oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. So when God wants to heal us, he pours his Holy Spirit into us. Like they did with kings. Mm -hmm. They poured the oil of the kings like they did with that one kid that turned into David, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. His yeah. name was David. Yeah. <laughs> and we're also instructed to use oil when we pray for people. Um, we anoint like we their heads with oil like we did with Elizabeth last night when we prayed for her. It is also a form of the Holy Spirit asking God to come and heal someone through the power of the Spirit. If we're talking about wine in the Bible, there's something called the new wine. Guess what? We've read a passage about that. <laughs> That's also is, what a form the of the Jesus. The Holy Spirit. That too. <laughs> so, you know, it's amazing how we have symbolism like that all the way through the Bible, but it always comes back to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. okay. Jesus wants to heal us, and in these days, he has given to us his Holy Spirit as a comforter, as a healer, as a guide, and the Holy Spirit will lead us into health, changing our lifestyles, you know, and there are times when the Holy Spirit will even reach out and heal somebody in a very miraculous way. There are people who have the gift of the Holy Spirit in miracles. It's pretty amazing to think that God can do that. God will do that. God wants to do that. So what does that mean for us? Elizabeth read the very tail end when Jesus asked the question, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Having mercy, being able to see somebody that's hurting and having mercy on them is what Jesus is instructing us to do. He wants us to be merciful. You know, we've got a lot of people right now 
who are kind of like the first two people. They see people that are hurting from COVID, but there's a lot of people out there that are saying, I shouldn't have to wear a mask. And the truth is God wants us to have mercy on our neighbors. And part of mercy means you look around and you say, there's a lot of people who have illnesses or who are older people that may need to be protected. Having mercy on those people means we wear our masks, whether we have COVID or not. We wear our masks so that we keep our friends and our neighbors and our loved ones and anybody else that we don't even know. We keep them safe as safe as we can. That's having mercy. And we keep our eyes open for other ways that we can be helpers. We look for people who may need a good meal. People who may need help with their finances right now. People who might need, you name it, groceries. We have beds if anybody needs a bed. We got them in our garage right now. Okay, we've got extra dishes. We're going to be having a giveaway at our church this Saturday for people who might need things and nobody has to pay anything. It's like going to the world's best rummage sale, but you don't have to take any money. People have given a lot of things. So, finding ways to have mercy. Elizabeth, every time you help put lotion on my feet before I go to bed at night, that's having mercy. I love you. <laughs> Sorry, she's mm. fine. <laughs> so, shall we pray? No, she's my, she's mine. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Yes. Lord Jesus. Help us to open our eyes to see those who around us need to have mercy. Lord, I kind of wonder if that priest walking by didn't also need to have some mercy because he had a hardness of heart that could not be moved. Lord Jesus, we offer up to you our hearts and ask that you will melt them and give us your grace and your wisdom. We ask this in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Joshua. Yes. Not belonging.